Although Switzerland did not directly participate in World War II, it was constantly researching new tactics and weapons that emerged during the war. They were particularly interested in tanks and tank destroyers, like the improvised ones known as Yellow Weasels. These vehicles made the most of the existing equipment at hand and were both cost-effective and practical. In 1943, Switzerland began designing and manufacturing experimental tank destroyers. These were modified tank destroyers based on the 38T light tank, with a similar appearance to the Yellow Weasel series. The main weapon was a 75mm gun, although there were plans to use a 105mm howitzer. This tank destroyer was called the Nakampfkanone 1. Here, there is a question about where Switzerland obtained the 38T light tank. Was it purchased from Czechoslovakia before the war? Please leave a comment if you have any information. Only one prototype of the Nakampfkanone 1 was produced, and it was used by the Swiss military until 1947. Considering the combat environment in the later stages of World War II, the Yellow Weasel series tank destroyers were clearly insufficient as effective equipment even in the hands of the highly skilled German army for defensive tasks. The Swiss army, lacking heavy weaponry, faced even greater challenges. Therefore, a new tank destroyer, the Nahkampfkanone II, was put on the research and development agenda. In 1946, the prototype of the new tank destroyer was unveiled. It was an armored weapon with a unique design that incorporated characteristics from various tanks used during World War II. The tank chassis followed a traditional structure with rear-mounted propulsion and front-mounted idler wheels. The front gearbox was similar to that of the M4 Sherman, and the idler wheels and track plates had distinct German tank style. It used six pairs of medium-sized rubberized road wheels, but the suspension was the same as the 38T with steel plate springs. The fixed turret on top of the tank was enormous, almost the length of the vehicle itself. This fighting compartment was protected by cast steel armor and resembled a bun or loaf of bread. There were three hatches for entry and exit, two of which were conventional, and the other was the commander's cupola, which protruded from the turret and had observation equipment. The gun was derived from the German-made Pac-41 75mm anti-tank gun, with a barrel caliber ratio increased to 49 times and a redesigned muzzle brake which should have improved efficiency. The turret could store 45 rounds of ammunition. Considering Switzerland's mountainous terrain, the forward-extending barrel of the fixed turret tank destroyer was not suitable for off-road travel, as it was prone to hitting the ground and getting damaged. Therefore, the gun on the Nakampfkanon two-tank destroyer could retract into the turret during marches. Originally, Switzerland planned to design four different models of tank destroyers, but ultimately only one was manufactured. From the photos, it appears that this vehicle was not equipped with light weapons for self-defense. The Nakampfkanon II, Swiss experimental tank destroyer, weighed approximately 24 tons, with a length of 5.24 meters, width of 2.85 meters, and height of 2.15 meters. It used a 12-cylinder engine. One of the reasons why the Nakampfkanon II did not continue to develop was reportedly due to financial issues. Considering Switzerland's national situation, it was indeed not worth spending a huge amount of money on tank development. In 1950, Switzerland began equipping G-13 tank destroyers, which were actually post-war production versions of the Czech-designed Hetzer tank destroyer. A total of 158 of these tanks were ordered, and they were used until 1973.